What is going on everybody? It is Aaron Tates and welcome back to the channel. Now today we are finally doing something I've talked about for months and I finally went ahead and did it because Daytona is coming up and it is the last thing on my list that I really want to done before Daytona and that is headers on my truck. We are doing long tubes with a Tatlas Y pipe and we're going to be doing non-foulers. They're called spark plug non-foulers to trick the O2 sensors into thinking that there are cats on it so we don't throw any check engine light codes. And I'll give you a little sound clip of it starting up and then we'll do a clip of me driving in the truck with it and a clip of me driving past the camera so you guys can hear what it sounds like under a load. And then tomorrow we'll, we, we will be showing you guys the headers with it. And then I'll do a separate video of going to the exhaust shop and getting the exhaust done. Okay, so here is just a takeoff from zero and we're not gonna go over like 3,500 RPMs just so you guys can hear what it sounds like. Truck's behind me, you guys hear it running. We did the end cab sound. Now I'm just going to take off from a stop. I'm gonna go slow and then slowly get into it so you guys can hear what it sounds like. This is everything that comes inside this header kit. Now I will have a link to this exact kit down in the description below. So this is the Catless Y pipe section of it, obviously. And let's take out one of these headers. Okay. What the fuck did they wrap this with? Military grade bubble wrap? Fuck. Okay. Ten fucking hours later. Wow, that looks good. Okay, now that I just struggled trying to get the bubble wrap off this for the past like solid five minutes, this header actually looks really great. So the welds honestly look really good. Come on, camera. There we go. The welds look great. Man, I can't wait to have these put on the truck. These look great. Pretty good, pretty good welds, I would say. Um, honestly, these look better than the headers that I put on the Ford. So I'm happy with it. This is the passenger side header and everything looks the way it's supposed to. I don't really know what I'm, what I'm looking for. I haven't done this before, but they look great. They don't look uh, used like the Fords did. So that's a plus, I mean, we've got our exhaust clamps right here comes with the flanges to mount down here everything looks uh, just about right Um, 
tried doing this last night. I tried to uninstall them, but it was too dark, and I tried to take everything off in the dark and film for you guys, and it wasn't possible, but I wanted to film, so I just stopped. I just woke up like 15 minutes ago. It was 7 o'clock in the morning, and we're going to get to taking the old manifolds off, and hopefully we can get everything done in the next couple hours so I can take this to the exhaust shop, so. After quite a few cuss words, uh, a lot of yelling, hitting stuff, and just getting mad in general, um, I can't take the old manifolds out with the Y pipe connected. So I tried to get my electric impact on those bolts, wouldn't come loose. Soaked them in some WD 40, wouldn't come loose. Put a torch on it, got it nice and hot, put my impact on it, and it stripped the bolt. So, I went to the old trusty dusty Harbor Freight and I got me a Sawzall and some metal cutting blades and we just don't cut the Y pipe off. Then you'll have to worry about bolts if you just cut the pipe off. Okay, so the last you saw was me cutting out the Y pipe and getting the driver's side manifold off. You did not see much of anything after that, but I think I remember telling you my oil dipstick tube was completely stuck. It was seized up and I could not get it out. What I ended up doing was cutting it in half, getting the passenger side manifold slid up over it and then out the bottom of the truck. And that gave me room to work with the dipstick because it would not just pull out like it was supposed to so I pulled I pulled I pulled and eventually it broke and I'll throw up a picture right here of what it looked like when it broke it broke completely flush with the block which was like terrifying but I was determined to not have to pull the oil pan because there's a lot more work than I really wanted I got out my extracting set I ran it in by finger until it got tight and I put a socket and a ratchet on it and I turned it by hand. And once it started turning, I just kept doing that. I'd spray it with WD-40 and keep turning it until it turned very, very easily. So then I then put the drill back on the extractor and I drilled and it came right out. And I was happy, but as you can tell, I'm still here and exhaust is not done and it's about five o'clock right now. Nothing ever goes right when you work on vehicles. Just always plan on that. If you don't work on stuff yourself, Nothing ever goes right. Nothing ever goes right. Nothing ever goes right. I'm going to put the headers in and my Y pipe. I just want to update you guys on what was going on because I did not film any of what happened because I will be blatantly honest with you. I was pissed off and I didn't want to film. I was not in a good mood to film and it would have been poor quality film. So. Nothing ever goes right. Let's start this off by saying this video is going to be trash. Welcome back guys, it's day three. Let me update you on what happened after we last spoke. I got everything in the engine bay ready for the header to go in 
and went to put it in and realized there's two broken bolts off in my block. I was confused on why there was only four bolts on each side and I kind of figured, you know what, maybe this is normal, whatever. And then I took it off, didn't really pay much attention to it, now I look, there's supposed to be a bolt on the front and back that I didn't have to take off because they're broken off on both sides. I don't know if someone else broke these off, if they just somehow broke off on their own. Right there is one of them and then and that hole is another one. And it's the same way on the other side, except for the front, there's some bolts sticking out, and on the back, it's recessed over there. So now I'm kind of like, you know, they were already there, they were already broken. I didn't have an exhaust leak. I already tried extracting it, it won't extract, it broke off. And I can't drill much farther in that bolt, because I'm almost all the way through it, so now it's kind of like, it's just there to stay. What turned from a five hour install has now turned into three days, because oil dipstick, broke off, flush with the block, had to extract that, found out there's four broken bolts in the block. I can't even get them to extract. Part of me wishes I would have just left stock manifolds on it and never found out about any of this because this is terrible. Okay, since I show you guys everything that goes on, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't think this is going to work. So if you watch this gasket right here, See how it's moving? It's moving all the way up to here. That would be one big leak right there. I'm sure it is the same way over here. I just can't get into the gasket. Okay, I'm not even gonna begin to explain what all has happened. I'll cover that at the end of the video, but we're on day four. Headers are in, just the headers. It's like die code, you have to start the truck when it's open header. We are on day five. I can't hold up all my fingers to them hold my keys, but we're on day five of the header install and everything has changed course. So this video kind of was all over the place. It was supposed to just be taking the old manifolds out, putting the new headers in, and that was it. But just like everything in my life, nothing goes right. Uh, it started with I couldn't get the Y-pipe bolts out. So I went to Harbor Freight and I bought a Sawzall and I cut them out. And then it turned into I couldn't get the oil dipstick tube out and then it broke flush with the block. And I had to get an extracting kit and finally get that out. And then we got the manifolds off and found out there's four broken studs off in the heads of my block. Apparently it's a common thing with GM that the studs break over heat cycles and I had to find a way to get them out. I drilled one out and it came out fine and then I was fighting with the other three and finally I went and bought a welder and I was welding a nut onto them. Well that didn't work for two of them and it worked for one of them so I was down to only having two stuck in the block. And then I found out uh, Dorman makes a bracket for this exact reason because apparently it's a common thing to save you from going through all this trouble, it just bolts into existing holes in the head and clamps down the header. Well, one of the threads was messed up on the one that I took out, and instead of being patient, I just tried to tighten the bolt down and hoped that it would fix the threads, and it snapped the bolt off. So there was a third bolt now snapped in the block, uh, previously where one was at. So all I have to do is order another one of the clamps. I have two clamps on it now. I'll have to order a third. It's already on its way. It'll be here in two days. Today's now Tuesday. I started this Friday night. And everything is back to normal. I'll give you a quick look at everything. In order to get the Catless Y-pipe in, you have to drop the transmission cross member. And the Y-pipe has to go on both headers simultaneously, meaning both at the same exact time, or else you will not get it on. And then you have to leave everything loose and kind of beat it in with a rubber mallet and a block of wood just so everything's snug, and then tighten up all your exhaust clamps. Even then, the exhaust clamps are not very tight. When I go to the exhaust shop today, I'm gonna to ask them if they could just throw a couple little spot welds on the on the Y-pipe to the headers just to be safe. That way it doesn't 
ever come off going down the road because I have a feeling that it will slide off because these exhaust clamps suck. So in this fender well, you see the header and the very back, I don't know how well you can see it, that silver bolt is the clamp. That is one of the bolts that broke off. This front one right here was broke off, but I was able to get it out with the welder. You can see header number two, and this is another clamp, and right there is where the bolt broke off. The kit they make bolts into that bolt and that bolt and presses against the header. Now there is RTV on this gasket. It is exhaust RTV, it is meant for this. Before you guys attack me in the comments. And well, this is the passenger side header. And then we have our Y pipe that goes underneath the transmission. Right here, it goes from both sides, and comes out and it bolts to my existing exhaust. That just goes off the back. The next time you guys will see me will be at the exhaust shop. We're going there later today and I'll go ahead and take you to the tuner with me because this Y pipe did not come with the bungs for the rear O2s and I was going to use spark plug defoulers to trick the system into thinking that the rear O2s are working right and well this Y pipe did not come with the bungs for that. So I have to go to a tuner today and have the rear O2 sensors tuned out Luckily, he's not charging me very much to do that because the $700 exhaust job has now turned into closer to $1,100, and <laughs> it hurt. It hurt a lot. So I apologize for how poorly this video was, but I'll close this video out with a quick cold start. The truck has not been started yet today. Of It officially with the headers, catless Y pipe, and just straight piped. So... I'll see you guys at the exhaust shop, and I'll catch you in the next one.